this is going to blow how you see cooking right out of the water. We're so excited you're here today because this is gonna change the way you do things in the kitchen forever. Right now, I know a little bit about what your life might be like because it's how my life used to be. You cook every single day, but not only do you cook every day, you're the one that has to decide what you're gonna be cooking. And you need to run to the store several times a week to get the ingredients. And then once you've decided and you've done all the finagling to get the stuff so you can make the food, you gotta actually cook it, but that's not all. You're probably the one that has to do the cleanup and maybe even the dishes. So it's kind of all on you. And maybe you've tried meal planning in the past and it is just an ongoing battle of having to do that every week and that seems like an insurmountable task. But we're here to tell you that there is an easier way. We are going to show you something we do that made it so that we don't live like that anymore. I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. And we are neighbors and besties. And we've been getting together every three months for the last mm, over 11 years. Yeah. To make massive amounts of freezer meals and we will show you what we do. We're gonna walk you through every step of the way how we're able to only cook dinner once every three months. It is pretty nice to do it that way and we're gonna answer questions along the way. We're gonna pop in here and there because we have a lot to show you. We are pretty much gonna jump right in today but before I do that I just want to tell you that we didn't start today. Mm -hmm. We started yesterday with our grocery shopping and prep. There's a lot that goes into prep and so we have a video that we're going to link into the description below that I'll show you how we brown like large amounts of ground beef and sausage and all of that at one time, how we cook and cube the chicken, large amounts again, the bacon, like all the things, how we are able to get it done faster and more efficiently. Also how we plan our grocery list and choose our meals and all of that kind of stuff. So if you're gonna do one of these sessions yourself, then I really suggest mm -hmm. that you first watch the video about prep. Yes. This is the most prepared we have ever been. If you look back at our old mega session videos, we are standing here at, at, at hair frazzled saying, <laughs> This is the least prepared we've ever been. You can't, oh, I don't know how we're gonna do it all. We always do, we always come through. But when she told me, she's like, I've already written the list of what order we're gonna do the meals. I'm like, Sharla, <laughs> that, is, that is singing my song because I am the one that likes to be really organized. It's and true. She is a jump in where you're at because sometimes you just have to. You don't, yeah. you've never really done at all. No. And sometimes we're not done our prep before we get started. This time we are, so that's a bonus. We are preparing these meals so that our meal plan is done for us. And we're gonna answer questions about that later on in this video too. We choose meals that are all kinds of cooking methods because we're both moms, we have busy lives. Mm -hmm. We need to have a variety. Yeah. Sometimes we do more work up front so that we can have an easy day of a reheat when we know that we're gonna get home, the kids are gonna get home and we have to be back out in half an hour. Other times we know that you know you have a little bit of extra time so we can have a chicken with a marinade that you're still gonna have to make a side and maybe a starch to go with it. And it's okay for those days. You can pick based on what your week looks like. And since it's summer, we're also doing some barbecue mm -hmm. recipes, of course, and slow cookers so that you don't heat your house up on those really hot days. So we're gonna dive right in. Like we said, we're gonna come back and answer questions along the way. It should be a lot of fun. It is a little bit tiring, but we're gonna give you some tips on how to combat that later too. This Thai chicken satay, I've never done as a freezer meal before, but I have made it up fresh and I have especially made the satay sauce, which is homemade, and this one is delicious. So we're really excited to have it as a freezer meal. It is more involved than most of our <laughs> meals are, so that's why I'm getting it out of the way pretty quickly here. To make your satay sauce, you're actually gonna do it on the stove top in a pot. You're gonna combine some olive oil, minced garlic, Thai seasoning, and chicken broth in your pot. 
Bring it to a boil and boil it just for one minute. Then you're gonna remove it from the heat and add brown sugar and peanut butter into a medium bowl and whisk in the hot chicken broth mixture. Then you're gonna mix in lemon juice, sesame oil, and soy sauce. You're going to take half of that once it's cool and place it into a medium size freezer bag, that's a quart size freezer bag. And then you're going to take some chicken breasts, cut them into strips because when you make this, you're going to thread those strips onto skewers if you want. If you wanna do it more simply, you don't have to, but you're gonna get them ready so that you can. Then on those chicken strips in a large resealable freezer bag, you're gonna put the other half of the satay sauce. You're gonna squish it together to combine, remove the excess air and seal. Then in another quart size bag, you're going to mix together some sun-dried tomato and oregano salad dressing, brown sugar and red chili flakes. Squish that to combine, seal it, and you're gonna staple all three bags together above the seal. The reason for that is on the day that you go to cook this, you're going to put your marinated chicken on some skewers, roll them. This doesn't take long to make at all. And then to serve it, you're going to actually serve this on rice in a lettuce leaf. And you can pour that extra dressing on top of the rice. And then you can top the chicken and the rice with some extra satay sauce just to make it more delicious. This country sausage and hash brown casserole is perfect for a large family or for a big event. If you've got a gathering to go to or a potluck, a brunch where you're having company, this is a great one. It can be served as a dinner or as a brunch, breakfast casserole thingy. In a huge bowl, we are gonna mix together some melted butter, can of cream of mushroom soup, half a can of evaporated milk and some sour cream. Once that's stirred together, you're going to stir in some garlic sausage, one of those garlic sausage rings or kubasa, kielbasa, whatever you call it, that's been sliced and halved. And then you're gonna stir in some diced onion, diced green pepper, shredded cheddar cheese and Cajun seasoning. You're gonna stir that all together and then stir in a large pack of shredded frozen hash browns. Once that's all mixed together, you're gonna to transfer it into your freezer bag, remove as much excess air as you can. It's a little bit tricky when you're working with things that are already frozen, like the frozen hash browns, but just do the best you can and then you're gonna seal it, freeze it, and this one is going to be so nice to have in the freezer. It's especially great if you've got a large family like I do. This is our world famous red sauce. It's available in the club and you are going to see fantastic Italian things go in here like tomato paste, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, and, and a good assortment of spices. time we are making these Italian meatballs. It's a really simple recipe, but it's going to be flavorful because we're using our red sauce for this. In our large freezer bags, we have measured out just some frozen pre-cooked meatballs. We just got ours from Costco. Then we're going to add a whole lot of that homemade red sauce, a little bit of rosemary, some lemon juice, salt, and pepper. That's really it. Very simple recipe. We're going to, of course, squish everything to combine it, get out that excess air, because when you're freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn. And so I don't think we've said it yet in this video. We say it in every video, but I don't think we've said it yet that that is why we're so careful to get the air out of our bags. Now, these are going to be great to have on meatball subs or on top of pasta. This is just gonna be a really, really nice, handy one to have in our freezers. This cowboy baked beans recipe has become a new favorite for taking to a potluck. My go-to was always taco salad before. We have a really good taco meat that we like to use for that one, but 
as soon as I tasted this, I thought, oh man, this is camping, this is outdoors. It's called cowboy baked beans for a reason. So we start out with a pound of ground beef. We're gonna add in diced onion, some diced green pepper, minced garlic, onion powder, eight slices of cooked bacon, which has been cooked and crumbled, which incidentally is one cup. We Now we know. Um, we're gonna add in a bit of brown sugar, four cans of baked beans, because really that is the star of this show. And we're gonna, just for extra kick, add in some barbecue sauce and some Dijon mustard. On the day that you go to cook this, you are going to, you can do it in the oven for an hour at 350. You can put this in your slow cooker for two to four hours on low. I have even done this in a skillet and really just gotten it good and bubbly. And honestly, you serve this with a bit of cornbread as your side dish and this is a fantastic meal. Tater tot casserole, it's a classic. Not especially healthy, but the kids love it. And it's definitely one of those go-to recipes in our house. In a quart-sized freezer bag, you're gonna measure out your cooked ground Italian sausage. I'm using spicy for my house because we like things spicy. And I'm using mild for Christy's house. So you're going to get the excess air out of that bag, seal it, and then you're gonna put a bag of frozen tater tots in a large freezer bag. And in a bowl, you're gonna to mix together a can of mushroom soup, a can of evaporated milk, some pepper and paprika. Pour that over your tater tots, get the excess air out of that, seal it, and then you're gonna staple the bags together above the seal and that's it. The recipe for this is going to be in the description down below. The first question that we're gonna answer is from Patty. Patty says, how do you sort your freezer meals in the freezer? All crock pot together, all meats together, random chaos so you eat whatever's on top. This is not the first time we've had this question. It gets asked a lot and when, I mean if you're only making five or ten meals, it's pretty simple to keep it sorted in your freezer. When you are making over a hundred, now mind you, we, we divide them, mm -hmm. but I personally am a fan of the chaos method. And here's why. When I first started doing freezer meals with Sharla, I would, okay, so we're at her house, right? I live two doors down and what we do, this is another question, how do you make it work? But I, I have a cooler out front on the north side of her house, so it's sitting in the shade and as we finish meals, we put hers in her freezer and we put mine in the cooler. When the cooler is full enough for me to lift, that or before it's too full before that I can't full. lift it, um, I will run it home. And what I do is I have a tall skinny freezer that's just, it's a, it's a fridge freezer that are side by side. So my freezer is tall and skinny. And so I have like five shelves. I'm trying to think of what it looks like. And I divide them up. Now we have talked about how we do protein by protein. So if we're doing all of our ground beef, of course, those are going to all kind of be in the same position in the stack. But when we first did freezer meals, I would just go home and I would pull them all out and stack them. And what I was finding was I would have three spaghetti sauces on top of each other and I'll just grab what's on top. And then we were like having spaghetti sauce like every two days and it was like, whoa, whoa, I need to <laughs> give more thought to this, but I don't want to give any more thought to it. So now I randomize it. <laughs> And do I, do I sort them by crock pot? No, no. And then how do I find them? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a question that we actually got from Esther is, Oh, that's a different question. You're where right. Where the meal you want is. And, and, but it's a similar idea, right? And so for me, I, like Christy was saying, we kind of randomize now because there's more room on the shelves in my freezer and I have two stand-up freezers so when we're adding them as we go here I'm able to put a little bit more thought into it and so it is random but at the same time okay this might not seem like more thought but I like it when it looks pretty <laughs> and so I kind of go by color like I I like the stacks to have a variety of colors. So, I mean, when I'm here and I'm doing meals and I'm putting your meal away, I just stack it wherever that is convenient for I, me. Do you rearrange? Yeah. Oh my goodness, 11 years, folks, and I'm still finding out freezer meal secrets from her. <laughs> yeah, that is just time, the cutest I darn thing ever. And put a meal away, I just like, 
you know, <laughs> move one. That is like, awesome. That is so because awesome. I just, because otherwise you might end up with like six meals that are all very, very different. Like you've got your chili, your sloppy joes, your spaghetti sauce. I mean, those are all ground beef. But then you've got like, like a shredded barbecue chicken, shredded barbecue chicken, and the the sausage pasta sauce and whatever. And those are different the proteins, color. but they're all red. I don't want a <gasps> shelf that's all red. I mean, that to me doesn't seem like it looks very healthy because you don't have a lot of variety. Oh, funny. And it doesn't look pretty. I'm. <laughs> I mean, we've established that I kind of like how things It matters to you. And look. That's, that's cool. And so, that's, so funny. that's how I randomize mine. But as far as how I choose which ones I'm going to have, I'm able to look. We've been doing this so long. And a lot of these recipes you know are what they standards. Look like. or Yeah. I can pick out a tater tot casserole from 30 yards. <laughs> like. There's some that are very distinct. But like I said, those... Like the spaghetti sauce, the sloppy joe is the chili that those ones do look similar in the bag. And that is gonna look similar like in the stack when you don't open it a little. And so I'll go through and once they're really frozen solid, you can lift them off each other. And then you can kind of have a look at that label because of course we label all of ours. You could put your labels closer to the bottom and that way you don't have to like reef so hard to be able to see it when you're, when, when you're doing this in your freezer. Now, there are some people in our Facebook group. If you are not in our Facebook group, you need to come and join it's our Freezer Meals 101 Facebook group. group. It is the most beautiful, kindest, helpful yes. group on, the inter on, on all of Facebook, probably on the whole internet. Yes. Um, there are some people that are very rigid in their beliefs of how it should go in the freezer. And sometimes they just have to for space. Yeah. Sometimes they are just... Sometimes they, they sort by protein or they sort by mm -hmm. cooking method. They just want to take it to the next level of organization. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, some people have um, like containers for each cooking method or for each protein. Those and big those reusable shopping freeze. bags are a good option because yeah. they hold their shape and you can put five or six in them and you can move them around in your, in your big chest freezer, mm -hmm. you know. Um, another mom she will take them from the big freezer and meal plan and put them in her kitchen freezer so that they're handy. Maybe her deep freeze is in the basement or in the garage where it's inconvenient for her to go. You, you wanna streamline some of this stuff to make it as simple as possible. I think it's a great idea. And she uses an app. She has an app. Angie, I'm talking to you. It's called Todoist. You also on our website have put a freezer inventory list that yes. you can grab. You know, you can be as organized or as chaotic <laughs> as you want. I'm just a big fan of the chaos, which is funny because I'm so organized in other parts of my life. <laughs> you are. We really like variety and both of us. And mm -hmm. so we like to randomize so that we're not eating the same thing over and over. Yeah. And we've got so much variety because as you're gonna see, as we continue here, we just make so many different meals. These zippy shredded chicken tacos are so, so awesome to have. They're super fast to put together because we're talking four ingredients here, people. All you're gonna do is put some boneless, skinless chicken breasts in your large freezer bags. I've put three in each bag. Because this is a shredded chicken recipe, three is gonna be plenty even for a larger family. Then you're gonna add four tablespoons of taco seasoning, two tablespoons of dry ranch seasoning. We've bought ours from Bulk Barn, or you can use a packet, but it won't take the whole packet, just two tablespoons. And then a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. That is it. We're just gonna squish that all together to combine, remove the excess air, seal, and freeze. These are going to be a great option for tacos this summer. This chicken tanga is so unbelievably delicious. You cook this in the slow cooker or the instant pot, and then you can serve it in tacos or on tostadas or in enchiladas or on salad. It is just so flavorful. You're gonna start with putting your boneless, skinless chicken breasts in your freezer bags. And then in a large bowl, you're gonna mix everything else together. And actually, we're gonna run an immersion blender through it. 
but I have run out of bowls because that's the reality when you're prepping so many ingredients and your bowls are being used to hold diced onions or diced peppers or sliced peppers or cubed chicken that's cooked, like all the things. So I'm using a pot because we just make do with what we've got. In your pot or bowl, you're going to put some olive oil, some onion that's just really roughly chopped because this is getting passed through an immersion blender so it doesn't really matter what those onions are like. Some minced garlic, we're using ours from the jar. And then you're gonna add some chipotles in adobo sauce. Now these come in a can and you're gonna add the sauce along with it, but you're not gonna add the whole can for each recipe. If you like things spicier, you can add more. And I, of course, love spicy, but I have to be cognizant of Christie's family too. So we're just gonna use the normal amount. Then some oregano, cumin, fire roasted tomatoes, salt, and pepper. Now, because I used the fire roasted tomatoes for the zippy shredded chicken tacos, I am doing this recipe next because it's a lot faster if you use like ingredients. So we're using the chicken again and those fire roasted tomatoes. When that sauce is blended, then you're going to pour the sauce into the bags. I'm just gonna divide it as evenly as I can, just kind of eyeballing it. Get out that excess air, of course, seal it, freeze it, and four more meals will be done. This barbecue meatloaf recipe has been a crowd favorite at my house, at Christie's house for many years. The funny part is it recently became a crowd favorite at Charla's house. She didn't make it often. She doesn't eat beef, so uh, meatloaf really wasn't high on her priority list, but we made some a while ago in tins for an individual serving size and her family ate them up. And she's like, well, I guess now we're a meatloaf family. So um, this is a really nice one. We start out with our raw ground beef. We add in breadcrumbs, graham cracker crumbs, we use evaporated milk, some minced onion, a couple of eggs, and some pepper, and some dry onion soup mix. We're gonna mix that all together right in the bowl, and then add that to a large freezer bag. And then in a smaller bowl, we're going to mix together brown sugar, dry mustard, ketchup, and some chili sauce, and that makes the barbecue sauce. And we're gonna put those bags together and staple them above the seal. And then on the day of cooking, you're gonna thaw it and then just put the meat right into an eight by eight pan. I've stopped using a loaf pan. I do really like the eight by eight. It just seems to cook really more evenly in my mind. But what is also nice about this is you put the barbecue sauce right on top of it before you put it in the oven. And then it's in the oven for about an hour at 350. You wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way through in the middle. Meatloaf is fully cooked at 160 degrees. So one of the things that does come up and we talk about it in our, we talk about it in, in a lot of our videos and in our prep video, we show a pretty good representation of, of how we go about deciding the meals, getting our shopping lists ready, doing our prep. And that is in the prep video and that's down below and you should click on it and have a look through. And I'll show you what the shopping list looked like the rough draft. The rough draft of, of the, the shopping, shopping list. list for this particular session mm -hmm. because it takes me a lot of hours to many, go many hours. recipes, times them by four or six or two or however many we're making of each one. And then to do the math of it because yeah. you have to add up your quarter cup, quarter cup, quarter cup, like 
you know, there's a cup of this, but then you have to add it to two thirds cup of that. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of mathing that happens. And if you've been around a while, you know that mathing is not our, not our, is not strong, our strong suit. suit. All of that to say, it is a lot of work before we even chop an onion, let alone assemble, like on a day like today. So what Charla's brain did, she decided, you know, if we're teaching people how to make freezer meals, we need to give them a way to do this for themselves at the click of a button, and that is what we have for you. We have developed the Freezer Meals 101 Club, and the link is down below in the description. Really, you can go in, create a meal plan for as many meals as you want, many as recipes as you want, and you can click, 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 add them in, and do you know what it's gonna do? It's gonna spit out an ingredients list for you. For your shopping, it's gonna tell you what you need to prep. Oh yeah, I need 10 onions. Well, how many of them need to be diced? How many of them need to be sliced? It's all right there for you. And then the best part, we have labels for you right in the club. These labels that you've been watching us put on the meals that have the cooking instructions, those are available for you. You can make as little as five recipes or you could attempt to do 30 like us. All of these have been tried, tested, frozen, cooked, and are good or they would not be in there. You will sometimes see in these mega sessions, we try new things. We have a lot of new things this time that we haven't made before. And if they're a flop, they are not in the club. I promise you that. Even if they're just so-so, they don't make it They don't the make club. it in the club. We want to pass along the best recipes. And we've got something a little bit exciting for you. If you are a club member, we are going to be doing a video in a few weeks mm -hmm. just for you that is going to tell you what we thought of the new recipes. We thought it would be really fun mm -hmm. after the last mega session, we did a follow-up video where we shared our thoughts on the recipes. We just thought we know our club members know us a little bit more than other people do. And so we thought we could just be a little more casual if we did it kind of a club members only. Yeah. We're always candid and honest, mm -hmm. but we're going to be maybe a little bit more candid and honest. I think there's room for that. And so it's just another perk of being in the club. This is a brand new recipe to us. It looks really interesting. It sounds like it's got flavors that we'll like, but really we'll have to wait and see. We'll let you know what the verdict is. So into our large freezer bag, we are putting a pound of ground beef that's browned, sliced red pepper, half a purple onion that's sliced, some matchstick carrots or shredded carrots. Did you know you can buy them that way? When we're doing these massive mega sessions, we just buy our matchstick carrots pre-done because that just makes things a lot easier, less prep to do for us some garlic that's minced, and then a quarter cup of fresh Thai basil leaves or regular basil leaves. I couldn't find Thai basil this time. Sometimes there's a specialty store near us that carries them, but this time they didn't. So I'm just using regular basil leaves. Some ginger that's minced, again from that squeezy tube, some soy sauce, brown sugar, fish sauce, salt, and lime juice. I think this would be really good served over rice. And maybe you wanna sprinkle some fresh chopped green onions or sliced jalapenos on top. Looking forward to giving this one a try. This ground beef stroganoff is a family favorite. We love it so much, we're even making an extra one for each of our families this time. You'll see here that we have uh, three bags of regular ground beef and three bags of veggie ground beef because it's one of Charla's favorites too. In the bags we are going to add chopped onion, minced garlic, sliced mushrooms, and I'm going to tell you something, we're adding extra today because we accidentally over prepped and so we have extra to put in there and that makes it really great and extra healthy. We're also adding in some Worcestershire sauce, some cream of mushroom soup, sour cream, parsley, and a bit of pepper. On the day of serving, you are going to add a little bit extra sour cream. So that's something that, you know, you lots of time have on hand in your fridge anyway. You just cook it up in the skillet, add it to some egg noodles, and this is a wonderful full meal for your family.
one thing that we find really helpful and saves a surprising amount of time is to keep measuring scoops in our items such as our ground beef, onions, peppers, those kind of things. For ground beef or ground sausage, two and a third cups equals one pound. So if your recipe calls for one pound, it's super easy to be able to measure that out and measure it into your bag. We just keep these spinach artichoke quesadillas are amazing. We have recently been a little bit obsessed with them. So we decided to add them into our mega session. They freeze beautifully and they're healthy and delicious. They're kind of restaurant quality, honestly. In a large bowl, we are mixing together a bunch of chopped spinach, artichoke hearts that have been drained and chopped, and I like to blot mine with a paper towel to get rid of some of that excess oil. Then some diced red pepper, some minced garlic, uh, mozzarella cheese that's shredded, or you could use a Monterey Jack, some Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, and red chili flakes. When you mix this all together, you're gonna notice that it is beautiful. Those colors just let you know how healthy this is going to be. Then you're going to lay down some parchment paper on a baking sheet. You're gonna put about a third of a cup of that mixture, or you could go as much as half a cup on half of a flour tortilla, fold the other half over on the baking sheet. You're gonna put the baking sheet in the freezer to freeze flat. Now, the reason that we're doing this one pretty early on day one is because we need that freezer space to be able to freeze these. Once they're frozen, we're gonna transfer them into large resealable freezer bags. These are great for dinners, for lunches. They are really great if you live on your own because you can take them out one at a time and you will be really happy to have these in your freezer. casserole is a new to me recipe. We did it once recently and it ended up being such a hit that bam, we decided that this is going in the club. And what else is really nice about this recipe is it's large. If you have a large family, this is one that you could probably get away with one bag and feed six or eight people add a salad, add some pasta. You could feed 10 people easily with this one bag of food, which is awesome. It is two pounds of ground beef. We're gonna add some onion chopped, um, a can of kernel corn, some tomato soup, ketchup, salt and pepper to taste. That's it. On the day of cooking, we're gonna put this right on some noodles that we have cooked and we're gonna to top it with some cheddar cheese. If you wanted to help yourself out for the day of cooking, you could add your noodles in a medium bag and staple it to this. You could add your cheddar cheese in a medium bag, staple it right to this bag, get it in your freezer. But I'll tell you something, when you're doing a, over a hundred meals, it, your freezer fills up pretty fast. And so this time we're opting not to do that to save a little bit of space in our freezers. And cheese is something that we generally have in our fridges that it's easy to grate up on the day that you go to cook this. For the spaghetti sauce, I'm using veggie beef in mine and I'm using real beef for Christie's family. I'm actually making four spaghetti sauces for myself because our family cannot get enough of it. And Christy doesn't want extra, so we're just making two for her. For the spaghetti sauce, we are using our amazing red sauce. So we get lots of flavor in there. 
We've got our ground beef or pretend ground beef in our large freezer bags. We're gonna add some garlic, diced onion, and some green pepper. Then we're just gonna portion out the rest of our red sauce among these six bags and we will have an amazing spaghetti sauce. We're popping in to answer a question from Heidi and it is, can you please let us know of tips on how to prep veggies beforehand? I know that we don't eat enough veggies and would like to get more veggies into our meals. I got a tip recently to add a shredded apple to meatballs. I have quite a few picky kids and Christy has a son who's picky. Mm -hmm. So we have over the years developed quite a few strategies of sneaking veggies in. Yes. You can do shredded zucchini, shredded carrots. Because those just about disappear, especially in like a pasta sauce or in a chili, which already has vegetables anyway, which also means that my son is less likely to eat them because he can see the onions. Oh no. <laughs> um, funny enough, we were talking earlier when we were making the ground beef stroganoff. Um, like I had mentioned, we have excess of mushrooms today. Yes, uh, it was just a, it's hard to judge how many cups yeah. mushrooms are going to make when you're looking at them at Costco and so I said let's take all of them <laughs> so now we have like twice as many so we were joking you know we're going to put extra in the beef stroganoff or anything that has mushrooms in it today and my son does not like mushrooms but he loves beef stroganoff he loves the beef stroganoff and it's got mushroom soup in it I can't get him to eat <laughs> mushroom soup but he will eat these mushrooms because it's in the beef stroganoff so if you make it delicious enough they might eat it but if you notice in our meals, there are actually a lot of vegetables in them already. There's some veggies that are kind of snuck in and then there's some obvious veggies. How many cups of carrots did we prep? How many, how many zucchinis did we prep? I did 40 cups of onions yesterday. We did almost that much in peppers. So yes, we did. We, all oh my of, goodness, we had 19 red peppers to prep and Oh, I forget. Like there's 16 14, cups of spinach. 15 red peppers and then five yellow peppers. Yes, there's 16 cups of spinach. So there is a lot of vegetables in this. If you want to take it a step further, and we, I don't think we have any side dishes in this list that we're doing no, this time. No, but we time. often do We sides. often will do sides that you can freeze ahead. If you look in our club or if you look on the website, we do have a lot of sides that you can prepare and have ahead. So... There are options for vegetables, Absolutely. for sure. And you are completely right about the shredding the apple and putting it in the meatballs. The other thing is model eating vegetables in front of your children. If they see it every day and see it as a normal part of your eating, they're gonna be more likely to eat it. This Sicilian pasta sauce is one that I haven't made in years and years and years, and Christy's not actually sure if she's ever had this. So this might've been before I started making freezer meals with Christy when I used to make them on my own. Either way, it is so delicious, and I had kind of forgotten about it. But now that I've remembered, it is definitely going to go into our regular rotation. In our large freezer bags, we are putting in some ground Italian sausage that's been browned again with our house having the spicier version and Christy's house having the mild. One onion that's minced, some sliced mushrooms. We've got some extra mushrooms today. So we're being extra generous on the mushrooms. Some green pepper that's diced, red pepper that's diced, and diced zucchini. As you can already see, this one is so incredibly healthy. Lots of veggies in there. Then some Italian seasoning, oregano, curry powder, Powder. and here's where it gets a little strange we're gonna add some butternut squash soup you've got two options here you can add butternut squash soup from your grocery store or deli or you can add our recipe for curry butternut squash soup if you add our recipe then you're just gonna omit the curry powder then you're gonna add a cup of chunky salsa. Again, a little bit of an ingredient that you wouldn't necessarily expect in this dish, but it all goes together beautifully and tastes amazing. And you're gonna add just one cup of water and that's it. You're gonna take the air out of that bag, squish it to combine it, and this goes beautifully on top of pasta.
are getting near the end of day one. We're actually having to end day one early mm -hmm. and we just wanted to come and be a little bit honest with you about sometimes these freezer meal sessions go better than other times. Uh, sometimes they've gone super smoothly and it's like we bang things out totally. and we get things done and we're out of there early and you know and everything goes exactly the way you want it to go and there have been other times where they're bordering on disastrous like i remember one time you called me and you were like i think i'm getting sick but we had bought all the groceries mm -hmm. and prepped all the groceries and like what do you do with three months worth of food for two families if you can't get it done and get it in the freezer. Like, One time the day before meals, I was moving furniture with my husband and I hit my face on a bench. Oh yes. And it broke, it cracked my tooth. That's right. And so I had to get an emergency dental appointment for the next morning. And so I phoned for Charlotte and I'm like, my husband hit me in the face with a church pew. <laughs> because, Accidentally. Because it's more exciting to say it that way. He's, yeah. He doesn't regularly hit you with furniture. <laughs> but but it was like, okay, or for how many times have we forgotten about an appointment? Yes. Or there's something that we just absolutely can't move. We deal with it and you move on because you kind of just have to jump in and do what you can because done is better than perfect. Um, it all gets done. We both have something to go to today, this yes. evening. So after... After prepping all day yesterday and cooking all day today and assembling, my daughter's getting an award at school. It's her first one and she's in junior high and she's awesome and we're gonna go. We, she doesn't know what the award is for. It could be for <laughs> interior <Attendance>. design. <laughs> it is not for attendance, I will tell you that. Yeah, but <laughs> we're gonna go. But that means I have to wrap up here at five. Whereas if I needed to normally, I could stay till eight. Totally. We, we've sometimes, we don't like to stay that late, but I mean, we have sometimes done that or at least, you know, 536 or kind of run into like, go until we're tired or whatever. Mm -hmm. And for me, like I was doing prep last night and so our ceiling sprung a leak in the kitchen right above, I'll show you, but right above Christy and I, there is a hole in the ceiling. We are literally filming under a hole in the ceiling because my washing machine, which is, we think, we estimate 15 to 20 years old. We're not entirely sure because it was not, it might be over 20 years old. It was not new to us and it was not new to the people that had it before us, which was my parents. So we have no idea how old this washing machine is, but it sprang a leak and it rained in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, Christy and her husband were actually over for a barbecue. <laughs> The night that it was there, they're the ones that told us. We're like, I got dripped on. And, <laughs> and I'm like, Charlie, you got, you got water coming through. <laughs> and, and my husband's tall and he reached up and he's like, yeah, it's soft. Like there's a problem here. <laughs> so <laughs> last night during prep, thankfully, one of my daughters helped so, so much with prep. Another one of my daughters helped a little bit. And my mom, bless her heart, came for oh. hours and hours and hours and helped so much. And I don't know how I could have gotten through because we had to have the water shut off twice to try to install this new washing machine, which is smaller than the other one. And I'm not complaining because it's going to work, which is awesome. But when you have seven kids, Smaller is not quite what you're You have a for. baby in the house. And we have a baby in the house. So my goodness, <laughs> we've got laundry. So that was a problem because, you know, you've got a lot of dishes to do when you're doing prep mm -hmm. and when you're getting things ready. And so we didn't have access to water for a couple of times, not the whole day or anything. And then also I have a torn rotator cuff. So I'm moving slower and there's things I literally can't do. And so I'm having to ask for help, which is not my strong suit. She's been great at it today and she has pasted a smile on her face, even though I know she's in pain. Uh, yeah. Um, she's not a, normally a drug taker, but she has resorted to taking meds for it today and they have not been really taking the edge off the way we hoped. Yep. So we are powering through in more ways than one. Now, we do have a secret ingredient that does show up on freezer meal days that you probably don't have and that's Charlotte's mom and yes. we love her and we're so grateful that she's here because 
Um, she does dishes for us. She opens up cans for us. She is a runner for us. And she even moved the red sauce over that giant yes. tub of red sauce. She moved it over so that Charlotte could, could do it. And she's just an extra hand when we need it. And we love her. And so everybody needs a Charlotte's mom oh, on freezer meal day. <laughs> and today, honestly, and yesterday, she's been my extra arm. It's true. Because literally. I'm a little bit one armed and trying yeah. to do things and like hoist. This one kind of, it won't go a lot higher no. than this. So I'm, you know, but um we're telling you all of this not to complain we're telling you this because if you wait until things are perfect before you attempt to do this yourself and if you wait till you've got the right circumstances <laughs> yeah. and until your days are totally free and like you know you won't no. get around to it you won't you won't get started so you just got to jump in with where you're at and there are days when our prep isn't done we said mm -hmm. that at the beginning. There are days when we are started and I show up and I'm chopping onions because I did not get to it the night before. We know you can do this regardless of your circumstances. We hear from people. People who are doing it have, all over. Yes, like yeah. who have all kinds of physical limitations or mm -hmm. space limitations. Dietary or limitations. Uh, yes. There's, yes. And they're doing it. So we know you can do it too. Is one of our most popular recipes. In a large freezer bag I'm putting some browned ground Italian sausage. In Christie's bags I've got the mild and in ours I have the spicy. Then I'm adding some onion, some minced garlic from the jar, carrots that are shredded, some onion powder, ginger. We use the squeezy tube ginger because it's already minced for us and it's nice and fresh tasting some red pepper flakes, low sodium soy sauce. In this recipe, it's really important that you do use the low sodium because otherwise it is much too salty. Some sesame oil and olive oil. Then we're going to add a whole bag of coleslaw mix. This way the cabbage is already shredded for you. We're using a tricolor coleslaw, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. And then we're going to squish that all together, get rid of our excess air, seal it, freeze it. This one cooks up super fast in the skillet on the day that you go to make this. This is our recipe for Kathy's Lazy Rouladen. It is really one of our favorites and it was a surprise favorite because it has some really interesting ingredients. Kathy was a good friend of Charla's and she used to make this freezer meal for her when she was going through um, cancer treatment. So we are always happy to make this one because it gives us nice memories of Kathy. We start out with our ground beef in the bag. We're going to add minced onion, but today we have chopped onion because that's what we have. We're out of minced and that's okay. Um, we're going to add in half a pound of bacon that's been fried, that's crispy and crumbled. We're going to add in a cup of dill pickles that have been chopped up. So you're going to put this all in the bag. We're going to get all the air out. We're going to freeze it. On the day of cooking, you want to thaw this, put it in a skillet and get it nice and hot. And then you're going to make a packet of gravy or you can make your gravy from scratch and you're going to pour it on top of it and mix it all in. 
And then this goes really nice with, actually we really like it best with potatoes. And it is a good one. It has become a family favorite. And um, it's just nice to think of Kathy. This hearty sausage and zucchini soup is one that both of our families love. We usually make it more as a winter soup, but honestly it had been so long that we were both craving it and we just decided to throw it into these meals. We are putting in our large freezer bag some ground Italian sausage, a jar of pasta sauce, some white kidney beans that are drained and rinsed, some diced zucchini, carrots that are peeled and chopped, onion, garlic, and chicken broth. Then in a medium-sized freezer bag, we're going to measure out one cup of small pasta shells, and then we're just gonna staple these bags together above the seal. It is the end of day one. Oh, end of day one. Oh, how did we get here? Because this has been a journey. <laughs> I think we forgot our brains at the door. Like, yeah. there was some funny mistakes happened today that we didn't normally make. The flour tortillas accidentally got frozen, so when we went to make the quesadillas... We had to defrost them. <laughs> Now I'm going to completely throw my 13 year old son under the bus because when we got home from Costco, I'm like, you can put all the bread in the freezer. And he put the tortillas in the freezer. That's an honest That's mistake. Honest mistake, but it was a hiccup. Somebody maybe dropped some onions. The, the arm is not working very well. <laughs> so anyway, yes, dropped some onions, like That's already okay. diced and on the floor. And they, I, the equivalent of an onion had to get thrown out. And that was, that's sad. sad. That's sad. But, um, lots of hiccups and mistakes. I didn't print the labels for <laughs> Kathy's Lazy Roulade and I don't know where they are. I, I'm sure I printed them, but they are not here. I'm going to go home and find them on my computer. But. But. There's always a, a but. Let me show you the freezer. Are you ready? Uh, we only put one meal in the other freezer today, but let's look at this freezer. <laughs> so, ta da! Ooh, everybody can ooh and ah! Oh my goodness! Don't you don't you wish your freezer looked like mine? <laughs> don't you? Don't you? Yes, you do. Charlotte, stand in front of your beautiful freezer. I'm doing a bad job. Ta da! So we are pretty happy with this because our total on day one is 72 meals. So 72! What's not bad? 72. For all our hiccups and all our mistakes and our, we always get a late start. It's always like chaos. Yeah, it was chaos. But we, we do actually thrive in the chaos a little bit. <laughs> That's why her other website is called The Chaos and the Clutter. Like, you know, it's good. It's good yeah. to be there. It's good to be here with her. We're and we're shutting down early. Yes, because we both have somewhere to be. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see you tomorrow morning, which actually is like, it's going to be right like away. a blink for and, you. And uh, so we're going to be back and we're going to get started. And we have some, like tomorrow is when we have all the new recipes, mm -hmm. like so many new recipes. So you're going to want to watch that. It is day two. Day two. Oh, for you, I know it's the same day, but... For us, it's day two, and we... let's do a check-in. How are you feeling? How are how are your feet today? My feet are okay. They're better mm -hmm. than they were yesterday. Me um, too. My arm is not good. In case you missed it, I tore my rotator cuff, and so this has not been that pleasant. Um, but I mean, nothing is pleasant. So, and sleep is I don't know if any of you have ever had a rotator cuff injury. Sleep is like not fun at all. So I just lay there and stare at the ceiling and think about like, oh, which meal should we start with tomorrow? Oh no. <laughs> I'll tell you, Sharla is, she is freezer meals, teal and green through and through. <laughs> you, you, you now officially eat sleep, yeah. like literally eat yes. sleep and what's the other Dream. one? Dream freezer meals. I definitely have dreamt about freezer meals, that is for sure. We wanted to tell you a few things before we get started that would help you if you're going to do a mega marathon. Yes. And that is, first, wear good shoes. Wear shoes. It's better for your knees, your hips, your back, right up to your shoulders um, and your brain, I'm sure, um, to get the shoes on. And then 
Drink lots of water because lots that'll help water. keep your energy up. And actually, yesterday <clears throat> I didn't do a good job. Start with the coffee though, because we're realists. She tea? has tea in there. Um, there <laughs> is a place caffeine. for caffeine in this whole scenario. And where's mine? Hold on. This isn't a ton, but I did manage to finish one of these yesterday and I had some water before I even showed up. It's available. We try right? to keep the water going all day. Today, I'm going to stay on top of them looking at my water over there. It's ready to go. Good. Um, and oh. my husband's going to stop and pick me up a Slurpee because oh. I need the caffeine. Like yeah. I, I'm just dragging today because of the shoulder. Sleep. Yeah. And something we learned early on when we were doing freezer meals, if you're going to make a meal that has alcohol in it, do not dip into the wine while you are making your freezer meals because the math gets that much harder. Like you're already in a bit of a brain fatigue, you're already in a bit of a, you know, you're tired, you're already making dumb mistakes like, oh, I forgot to film this part or look at that, I put in crushed tomatoes instead of diced. You know, you only need a cup of wine for this whole four recipes and then we pour ourselves some and then it's like we get the, the giggles are fine, but the mistakes. Yeah, so we don't do that anymore. No, we either save the alcohol for later and I don't drink at all anymore. So <laughs> I like, we do it sober and that's okay. <laughs> don't drink and freeze your meal. But it's, Slurpees are okay. Slurpees are great. You know? Absolutely. Caffeine, I will never say no to. <laughs> <laughs> so a good playlist is good. We're actually working on getting mm -hmm. a playlist to share with you guys because having that high energy music in the background is great. And what else is new? We have a new website design. Oh, like, yeah. It's Beautiful, if I do say so myself. Actually, I can say that because it really was Christy who did a lot of the design. So I can I sing her praises and be like, it's beautiful. More than being gorgeous, it's more functional. It's it really a lot is. easier to navigate and get around. So a lot of the recipes that we're showing you guys are in the description below. You can find the link to them or you can just go to our site and poke around. There are more of the recipes that are in the club, of course, and you can find the link for that below as well. And in the club, what's new is we now take PayPal, which has- That was exciting. Yes. That was like a big achievement in our, in our realm. And it's right? great for international people, especially. And we're doing some more club exclusive videos and we have over 250 recipes in the club. And they're delicious. I promise. They have the Christy Charlotte stamp of approval. They really do. They don't go in the club unless they're actually good. We have quite a lot of more elevated recipes in the club because that tends to be what I go towards, but there is a place for like the beef and corn casserole mm -hmm. that Christy made yesterday. There's I mean, a that place is tomato soup that. and ketchup, but mm -hmm. there is a place for that and it's still delicious. <laughs> Easy to put together ingredients you probably already have. Kid friendly. Kid friendly, budget friendly, you know, mm -hmm. just family friendly. There's a place for And that. it's a big one. Like it is yes. a big recipe that could easily feed a large family. I think I said that yesterday. So there is a real mix. There is something for everybody in the club. Freezer meals are for everybody. If this is one of your first time watching our videos, then you might not know that I'm a mom of a large family. I've got seven kids. Not all of them are living at home right now. One of our sons lives in another province, but we do now have one of our grandbabies or our only grandbaby living with us. He's 10 months. And so we have a really large family. Christy's got more of an average size family. We're a nuclear family. Boy and a girl. Two yeah. adults. <laughs> what, what do they call it? The million dollar family. Oh. That's what I, that's what I like to say the best. Because it's me and my husband and my two kids. I have two teenagers, a boy and a girl. And my husband, he works shift work and he hates sandwiches. So actually freezer meals have been a huge help in my life because if this can feed her family of nine, and I mean, sometimes you have to put stuff together. Sometimes your girls do eat like birds. Yes, or my do. children sometimes eat like a crocodile. I don't know. <laughs> um, they're hungry. Like growing children. Like growing children. And, but there's enough for my husband to take for lunch. So, you know, there's really, this has just been a lifesaver. This has been the best thing I've ever done. Oh, me, me too. 
just, yeah, me too. And today we're gonna be doing, starting with, Christy's gonna do some chicken thighs. She's already prepped these at her house, so they're the chicken's already in the bags. I've trimmed it up, I've taken off the extra fat bits. Sometimes there's bone left in, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You wanna go through them, trim them up, and one Costco tray will make two meals. So two trays makes one recipe, and so it's already done. Today I can just go dump, 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 and mm -hmm. they will be fast to put together, and that is gonna be 12 more meals in the freezer. And I'm gonna get started on some cooked cube chicken. I cooked it up on our prep day, and then my daughter cubed it. <laughs> so, so thankful that I Okay, one of the best things that happened is her daughter has an interest in cooking and has taken culinary in high school and is, is yeah. looking to go on to culinary school. So uh, yeah, we have help with our prep. Yeah, and I pay her because I'm nice like that. Uh, <laughs> and it's worth it. It's, it's so worth, worth it. it. It's so worth it. When you're doing cooked cubed chicken, it's really handy to know that one cup is about one chicken breast. Now, of course, like some chicken breasts are larger and some are smaller and whatever, but it kind of averages out so that one cup e equals one chicken breast. So if your recipe calls for three chicken breasts, you're gonna put three cups of the diced chicken in, the, in your bag. And it's just a super easy way. And just like we do with the beef and the ground sausage and the onions and the whatever, we're just gonna put a one cup measuring thing in with the cooked chicken and I can just easily scoop it up. So it's just those tiny little things, mm -hmm. like having the knowledge that one equals one and whatever right. is super helpful, but also just having those little cheats and those things we've learned over the years, like keeping your measuring scoop in there, just saves a ton of time. It does, and for your prep, um, so you know, we do the same thing for onions, like Charla mentioned, onions sometimes they're small, sometimes they're large, sometimes they're huge. We just average it out as one cup equals one onion. And so that sometimes means we have some left over more than we run out ever. Mm -hmm. um, and for cheese, four ounces is about one cup of shredded cheese or a little over, about a hundred grams, maybe 120 grams. Canadians, Australians, I see you. <laughs> um, and so that's how we decide how much to cheese to buy. So she'll give me, yes, this this one called for nine cups of shredded cheese, which is actually kind of low. It's Very one of the low. lower We've ones. Had 40 cups of shredded cheese before. Totally. And so I, I bought a block that was 1,100 grams at Costco and shredded that up and that'll be perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now the other thing about day two is that at the end we get some leftover ingredients. Like Christy was saying, you might end up with some extra onions because we'd rather have too many than too little. And so at the end, I invent recipes yes, with <laughs> what we have left over, or I go into the club and click on you know the protein that we have left and see what populates, or I type in the ingredient that we have left in there and see what populates. And so I did that this morning, and so I've added two recipes onto you. our list because uh -huh. we have leftover spinach like crazy. Did I overestimate the spinach? We needed 16 cups. So I'm standing there at Costco. I need to measure a cup of spinach. Yeah. And so I'm looking at these big bags, and I'm like, well, because that looks like four. Oh, I didn't math. Oh, I got 60, 16 times four. I think because I decided this would fill, okay, hang on. <laughs> oh my goodness. In my mind, I'm like, okay, four cups. Yeah. This blob would go there, this blob would go there, but then you chop it, so I'm like, I'm gonna need more. So I doubled it, but do you know what I really thought? One cup, one cup, one cup, one cup, which is why I bought four bags. Yeah, so we have four 64 bags. 64 cups of spinach, yeah. really. <laughs> yes, we do. And so but that's an Spinach freezes. Yeah, no, it doesn't it freeze in everything. It yeah. wilts. It gets. It can be soggy, but it depends what you put it in, and it depends yeah. if you chop it or if you leave it whole. So I we have a lot of spinach. So My I bad. did a search this morning in the club for spinach. I know that we're gonna have leftover cooked cube chicken. Yeah, and we're gonna have leftover, or we already have leftover ground sausage because we finished all the ground sausage recipes yesterday, and we have leftover. And so, because I bought them by the case, it was cheaper to do that. Yeah, and so yeah, I, yeah. I bought some extra. And so we are going to make 
this really, really, really good pasta recipe that we have that's ground sausage and spinach. Oh yeah. And whipped cream and these mm -hmm. tomatoes like that are, you know, those like fancy Roma tomato type things. Oh, anyway, the San Marzano? Yeah. Oh kind. yeah, we are. And so we're not going to complicate it and cook the pasta, which we normally do when we make this recipe. We're just going to cook the pasta on the day of because today we're going to be tired. And so I'm just gonna We're throw starting tired, the sauce so. <laughs> together. And then the other one is like a another pasta one that's like an Alfredo with chicken and spinach and Oh yeah. You know. And so again, I'm gonna really simplify our life and I'm just gonna make the sauce. So we're adding recipes today. It's gonna be a big day, but we're up for it. We're up for it. We're gonna get started and we'll check in with you periodically and definitely give you our grand total at the end of the day yeah. and show you the big freezer reveal. <laughs> this next recipe is cranberry chicken dump. This is a new to us recipe. I'll be a little bit honest. When I saw it roll through on my computer, I thought, I am not so sure about this one, but we talked about it this morning and Charlotte did remind me that it is pretty similar to that lady's chicken that we have in the club and I like that, so maybe it's actually going to be better than I think. Um, we're starting out with boneless, skinless chicken thighs in the bag. We're going to add 14 ounces of cranberry sauce. We're going to add some Catalina dressing and some dry onion soup mix. We're gonna mix those all around in the bag. We are gonna remove all the excess air and then we'll seal it up and freeze it. One of my favorite recipes is this chicken in a mango cream sauce. It's actually the very first recipe I put on the list when we were planning this mega session because we haven't made it in a few sessions, so which means it's been like probably six months since I had it and I need it in my life. So in these bags, we're putting three chicken breasts that are cooked and cubed. So that's the equivalent of three cups of cubed chicken. Then some purple onion that's thinly sliced, some sliced green pepper, minced garlic, madras curry paste, and some flour. Now flour doesn't work in most freezer meals. So you'll find that we have it in almost none of our recipes. But in this one, it does seem to work. We do what works. So at this point, you're actually gonna seal your bags and shake them around. What you're doing here is you're getting that curry paste and flour to coat your vegetables and chicken. Then you're gonna open your bags back up and you're gonna add some chicken broth, some mango tangerine juice, but we haven't been able to find mango tangerine juice for about a year. So we're just using mango juice, some evaporated milk, mango chutney, and of course, red chili flakes because I love them in everything. Then you're gonna take the excess air out and seal your bag, freeze it. This one you serve over long noodles like spaghetti or linguine. You can top it with more chili flakes and grated Parmesan cheese if you like. It is just so flavorful. Give it a try. This is our second attempt at a Creole. We have tried a seafood Creole in the past and it was uh... So we're gonna try this chicken Creole and I think it's gonna be a winner. We started with our boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're going to add tomato sauce, diced onion, diced green pepper, minced garlic, red wine vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper, cayenne and basil. We're gonna mix it all together in our bag, seal it up and freeze it.
recipe for us. It is chicken and sun-dried tomato pasta sauce, and it has all kinds of weird ingredients, which we're kind of excited about because we have found our best recipes have weird ingredients. <laughs> Into our large freezer bags, we are putting some cooked and cubed chicken, some sliced onion, bacon that is cooked and crumbled, mushrooms. Now it calls for seven sliced mushrooms. We're gonna be generous because as we've established, we have a plethora of mushrooms. Then we're gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes that are sliced and both of our families really like sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm thinking already this might be a really great one. Some lemon juice, Madras curry paste. Now we use the Madras curry paste in that chicken and mango cream sauce that I just did. And when I'm choosing recipes, I try to choose recipes that have similar ingredients because then if you're buying that jar of Madras curry paste, if you can use it in multiple recipes and use up the whole jar, it's just more economical. And it also cuts down on time if you're using the same ingredients. Then we're gonna add some white wine. I actually don't have any white wine in the house, but I had some rosé. So this is gonna be with some rosé. Then some poppy seed salad dressing. See, this is where, you know, it gets a little weird because we've got sun-dried tomatoes and Madras curry paste and then poppy seed salad dressing, but we're gonna give it a shot here. And then a can of evaporated milk. We're gonna squish that all together. We're going to get the excess air out, of course, seal it, freeze it, and this can be served on spaghetti or linguine. We will let you know what we think. Hi, kitty. Oh, aren't you so cute? <laughs> this sesame mustard chicken is another new one for us. Um, we start out with our chicken thighs in the bag. We're going to add in a bit of beer, some sesame seeds, some honey, some Dijon mustard, some garlic, and salt and pepper. We're going to squish it all and remove that excess air, seal, and freeze. Kayla asks, how do you meal plan with what you have? Do you make a list every week so you can get the sides you need and know what to thaw? So how do you? How do I do it? I have established before that I'm a little bit chaotic and I fly by the seat of my pants. And there will be times where I will come across a freezer meal where it says, like a sloppy joe's and i'm like do i have hamburger buns no i don't so i will then go put hamburger buns on the list for my next grocery shop so even if i don't make them that day i at least have them in my freezer ready to go other times it's something like the peppers the stuffed peppers mm -hmm. i like to do that with fresh peppers that is something that i would want to make within a day or two and so it isn't it isn't like i've planned ahead where i have my meal plan all laid out it is more of a, oh, hey, I'm gonna need to get some fresh spinach to wilt in that. So I'm gonna put it on the list. The next time I have it, then I can use that one. And I do generally make a bit of a meal plan. I'll make a list of what I'm gonna make that week. Uh, not every single week. Sometimes I just pull out like what I'm feeling like or, you know, when the mood strikes, but or you um, forget you had something in there and you're like, oh, yes. I found a seafood curry. I'm, I'm so, so excited. excited. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time I do meal plan. And so then I write a list. We also, our family goes to the mountains about one week every two months or so. Kind of, eh, sometimes it's every month and then we don't go for a few months. But when we do that, I bring up all of our meals with me in the cooler. And so then I need to make a list of what I'm going to be bringing, but also what I'm going to need. Mm -hmm. So um, I already have our list because we're leaving in two days <laughs> to go and do that. So it's busy, busy this week. Um, and so I have a list. I'm going to be trying some of the new recipes, but I know, okay, with that sun-dried tomato chicken pasta sauce one, I'm going to need some spaghetti or linguine noodles. So I've got a list of what I'm going to need for that. And yeah, and or what I'm gonna bring with me. Like if we're bringing the beef stroganoff, then I'm gonna bring egg noodles because mm -hmm. I know that I need it. I do something so, similar for camping. When mm -hmm. we go, okay, I need, we have four days. I'm gonna need at least four suppers. Maybe I could have a couple of lunches in there too with freezer meals. And because our family goes four wheeling, like 
quieting, then you're looking at things like, do I need slow cooker? Do I need fast, quick to prepare? Do I need something that I could possibly do over the fire? like skewers or something. So there is a bit of planning for that sort of stuff. Your mountain holiday kind of reminded me of that. That yes, there yeah. are t there are times and I will sometimes take meals back home with me. I grew up in northern Alberta and I still have family up there. My mom is up there. And so I go and when I'm going, I don't want to put all the cooking on her. So I will take meals with me, but I also I want, you know, are we gonna need big ones for my brother and his wife to join us? Or is it gonna be just little ones for, for us? You know, so there's some planning that way, but by and large, not a planner. You're a fly by the city of your pants. And <laughs> uh, we've talked about this in other videos, but Christy tends to use her meat marinades first because she likes to do I'll tell you why, size. because my husband loves potatoes. Right. Over rice or pasta. Rice or pasta are faster, they're easier, but we are a real, like we're both farm kids. I've said this before, we are real meat and potatoes people. So those chicken in the marinades or the pork chops, or if we ever do steak, which we rarely do because sometimes steak just needs to be like fresh, right? Yeah. Um, although we do have a steak coming we up do, in this yes. one. Um, yeah, so we, I go through those the fastest because I will make a traditional supper with the, the meat and the vegetable and the potato. The humble and potato. I leave those to the very end. Like we know that we're getting to the end of the freezer meals when my freezer is full of just salmons and marinades and chicken and marinades. And you like the big, the big meal, the full all-encompassing meal often. Yes. Or something you can make with a pasta. There's a lot of pasta I sauces. Like, I like pasta. And right now I mean, that's what I had left over and that's what I had to move to my big chest freezer. And I use my slow cooker quite a bit. So yeah, those meat ones, like the marinade ones, just get left to the end for me. And then I do really have to plan because then I'll write out what my side dishes are gonna be. And then when I get down to those, then I totally have to like sit down and make a plan. But sometimes we've got some stir fries that are veggie only. And so I can use that as a side or um, sometimes we make side dishes like freezer meal side dishes, we've talked about that. And yep. so I can use those. And when I do make freezer meal side dishes, then I actually use those marinades a lot faster. Yeah. When we're at home, our kids just make their own breakfast. Some of them get fancy and make like eggs and hash browns or omelets. And most of them just do, you know, toast or cereal or oatmeal. But when we do go to the mountains, then I usually bring breakfasts with us. So whether it's like waffles or French toast, hash brown casserole, frittata, like all those make ahead freezer meal things and I bring them with us. It's just a nice treat and a way that we can all sit down and eat breakfast together because we're not running in 10 different directions. No, like but we you are. also need a hearty breakfast because when you go to the mountains, you are there to ski or to bike or to hike. Yes. And it's- And they're hungry. They're like, hungry. We go through a lot more food. Even my girls who eat like birds eat a lot more when we're in the mountains. The fresh air <laughs> so, and the relaxed pace. Isn't that yes. funny? Hey? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I guess our answer to that question is it depends. That's the best we've got. That's but the best we've got. do what works for you. This is a sesame steak recipe. I'm really excited about it because not only does it have a rub, but it has a sauce. And we're gonna do them separately and you'll see what I mean. We are going to poke holes in our steak first so that it has a chance to marinate through and through. We're going to start with the rub. Together, we are going to mix lemon pepper, oregano, basil, thyme, marjoram, and garlic powder. We're gonna sprinkle that in on the steak in the bag. We're gonna zip it up, make sure it gets good and coated, toss it around. And then in a little bowl, we're going to mix together the sauce. It will be tahini, which is where the sesame is coming from, ginger, salt, paprika, minced garlic, soy sauce, a bit of sour cream, and some water. We're gonna add that into the bag Again, coating everything to marinate it evenly and freeze it. And then when you go to cook this, this is going to be great to throw on your barbecue. For the first time in history, we are attempting to do pasta salad for the freezer. Pasta salad's a bit of a tricky one because, sorry, my grandson's making funny noises in the background. Pasta salad is a bit of a tricky one because mayonnaise doesn't freeze super well and a lot of pasta salads are mayo-based. 
We've considered making one with pesto before, but we're just gonna jump right in and try something entirely different. And we'll let you know if it freezes and thaws well, because pasta salads are so awesome to have for summer. They're great for taking to barbecues or potlucks. They're also great for hot days when you don't wanna heat the house up. So into our large freezer bag, we are putting some chicken breasts that are cooked and cubed, some pasta that we are cooking. Now we're not undercooking it. Usually when you do freezer cooking, you undercook the pasta because you're gonna be reheating it. But this one's not getting reheated. So we're cooking our bow tie pasta according to the package directions. Then we're adding some cooked and crumbled bacon some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper. Now we're making two variations on this because we wanna really give it a try. So in one, we're doing lemon juice and some Caesar salad dressing. In the other one, we're doing lime juice and a jalapeno ranch dressing. I think these are gonna taste amazing. When you serve them, you can serve them just like this or you can add two cups of romaine lettuce that's been washed and torn into bite-sized pieces you could also throw some croutons in there if you want. This can be a full meal because you've got your protein and your carb. And if you add the lettuce, then you've got your vegetable. I'm really looking forward to trying this one. It is difficult to film with a baby here, but he sure is cute. <laughs> This easy beef goulash is a new one for us. We start out with our beef strips in the bag. We're going to add in some sliced purple onion, red pepper, yellow pepper. We are gonna uh, add some wonderful spices. There is a hunk of paprika going in here. Some pepper, some minced garlic, some red chili flakes, and then we're just gonna add in some beef broth and Italian stewed tomatoes. These are going to work beautifully together. Pasta is probably in my top three of favorite freezer meals. We've been making it for a long time and I just love it. My whole family loves it. It's an easy one to put together on the day of cooking. And so that means it's a little bit more complicated up front in that we have a couple of steps. So we are going to start out by putting shrimp and scallops each in their medium bags. Normally we would do that. This time we're skipping the scallops. Um, the price on them has just skyrocketed. If they were on sale, I would have gotten them, but when I was just standing there looking at Costco, I couldn't make myself pay the price. So we're gonna skip the scallops on this one, and that's okay because freezer meals are for everybody and you just have to make them work for your family. So we do have bags of shrimp that are in medium bags, they'll get stapled to the big bag. So in the big bag, we're gonna put in half an onion that's sliced. We're gonna put in mushrooms. Now, it calls for six sliced mushrooms. Again, we are um, really being generous with the mushrooms today because we have a little bit extra. Uh, we're gonna add in some chopped sun-dried tomatoes, some curry powder, it's not a lot, just one and a half teaspoons. This isn't a super heavy curry flavor going on in this recipe. It is just nice and mild. It gives it a little bit of zip is what it does. Also giving it zip. Some pineapple juice and then we're adding in mushroom soup and evaporated milk. We're gonna mix it all together. We're gonna staple it to the bag of shrimp and then we will serve it with pasta on the day of cooking. This cabbage stir fry is another new one to us. You will notice on the labels at the end that I had sent it to Christy as a cauliflower stir fry, even though it has no cauliflower in sight. So 
Clearly my brain was not that functional that day either. But anyway, this is going to be a great cabbage stir fry, even with the cauliflower stir fry label. In a medium bag, we're going to put some low sodium soy sauce. It's really important in the recipes that we call for low sodium that you really use low sodium or it will be too salty. Then some vegetable broth, sesame oil, rice vinegar, minced garlic, and a bit of melted honey, and of course, red chili flakes. You're gonna squish all that to combine, seal it, and then in a large freezer bag, you're going to put some sliced mushrooms, olive oil, sliced onion, sliced red pepper, quite a lot of carrots that are cut into matchsticks or shredded, and again, we just bought those pre-done, some ginger, minced garlic, and another bag of that coleslaw mix. So that's the shredded cabbage, or you could shred your own if you prefer. And we're just gonna mix that together, seal it, staple both bags together above the seal so that that way on the day that you go to make this, you'll have your stir fry sauce in that medium bag and you'll have everything that you need. One of the other things that we do to save time is every time we get ready to make a recipe, you'll see us scurry around and get all of the ingredients that we're gonna need for that recipe. That ensures that when we go to assemble it, we can just dump the ingredients into the bags and be done as quickly as possible. Seems like a small thing, but all these little tiny time savers end up saving a lot. <music> skewers are going to be put together so fast you better be careful because you'll blink and miss it. Into each bag we're going to add a pound of shrimp, we're going to add in plenty of Cajun seasoning, some olive oil, lime juice, and that's it. We had a brainwave one day that we did not need to skewer our stuff up front and freeze it already skewered. You can easily put that in a bag and do the skewering on the day of cooking. So that is what we're going to do with these. You could also serve these on pasta. You could serve skewering. these on, you could totally skip the skewer altogether and just serve these on pasta. They would go nice with, you know, like a steak or a- Yeah, a barbecue. Barbecue, because yeah. of the Cajun flavoring. These are pretty versatile for being a humble shrimp. Asian rice bowl is a great recipe, especially when you're on day two and you might wanna get rid of some of your extra ingredients. I chose this one purposely this time, but I knew that we would probably be throwing in some extra things. You're gonna to add to your large bag some snap peas or sugar peas, some carrots that are peeled and sliced, now it calls for green onion, but we've got white onion sliced left over. And so I'm gonna be using that. Then some water chestnuts that are drained, some minced ginger, minced garlic, rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, sesame oil, melted honey, and sriracha sauce. We're also adding in a can of baby corn that's drained. And because we have leftover mushrooms, we are adding in the rest of our mushrooms and who knows what else might make its way in here. This is our world famous corn chowder soup. And we are making eight because we love it that much. It's a really great one for summer. It's a great one to have for company. It's mild, it's not super corny. It's just super lovely. 
We are starting out with some onion. We're going to add in mushroom soup, evaporated milk, cream corn, kernel corn, and some chicken broth, and the best part, a little bit of bacon. Then we're going to divide this giant tub into four equal bags. This is the biggest bowl we have. I think Tupperware makes one bigger, but this is the biggest bowl we have. And it, this will divide nicely into four bags and then we have to make a second bowl. There is a lot going on into this soup. There's about seven and a half cups per, per bag. bag. Yes, there's about seven and a half cups per bag. It has taken a lot of trial and error to get us down to that amount, um, but that's where we've nailed it down to be. We are popping back in to answer some more questions. One of the ones we get all the time is, how do you keep the bags from sticking to each other? Mm -hmm. It makes sense that they might freeze together when they are all kind of forced into the freezer in a short amount of time, but we don't really have that problem and there's an easy solution. Two things will prevent your bags from sticking together and one is that you never want any moisture, wetness, anything on the outside of your bag. So you might notice in some of the overhead videos, you're gonna see us, if we have a spill on the outside of the bag, you're gonna see us really diligently wiping that off. And that's the reason we don't want our bags to stick together. Mm -hmm. I guess like when you have frozen things that are in there, it can kind of create some moisture. Because in the of the bag. condensation, mm -hmm. like when you're putting in something that's room temperature on top of something that's frozen, there might be like even right now, we use frozen shrimp. So mm -hmm. when I made the Cajun shrimp, I always put them in Charlotte's freezer until it's time to go home because I don't want them to defrost in my cooler at all. But yes, by the time I get them out of her freezer, into my cooler and into my freezer, there is a chance that they're already starting to have condensation on it. They're, they're a little bit wet. And so I, there's no point in wiping them really because they're just gonna continue to condensate. I just put them in and I hope for the best and I really don't have a large problem with it. And the other thing is just making sure everything is cool before you put it in your bag. Yeah. That's for two reasons. One is that helps prevent freezer burn. Of course, the other thing that prevents freezer burn is getting the air getting out. The air out. If we haven't mentioned that like a thousand times, <laughs> gotta get your air out. Um, but yes, if you put things that are still hot in your freezer bag, that can also cause things to stick together in your freezer. So, and it makes your freezer have to work harder. There's right. just all kinds of reasons you don't wanna do that. Mm -hmm. So that's how you keep your bags from sticking together. However, if you're still finding it a problem, then you can put sheets of cardboard or parchment paper. Some people use paper, parchment paper, paper towel. In between. Some people freeze them flat on a cookie sheet mm -hmm. and then stack them upright like the library book method, which works too. So whatever works for you, um, but that's how we solve it here for us. This maple salmon sheet pan meal is a new one to us. And what's nice about it is you can bake everything together on a sheet pan and we're giving you a good head start with the freezer meal. We start out with one sweet potato that has been peeled and thinly sliced. Then we have our salmon fillet in here that has been um, sliced up and is ready to go. In another bowl, we're going to mix a clove of garlic with some salt and pepper, some olive oil, lemon juice, and a little bit of maple syrup. We're going to put that mixture over the sweet potatoes and then we're gonna put a little extra dollop of maple syrup in with the salmon because there is no such thing as too much maple syrup. Then we're going to mix it around, get the marinade in there good, staple these together. And then on the day of cooking, it's such a nice one because we can put everything out on the baking sheet. You can add your salmon to it with the sweet potato. You can add some baby potatoes and some asparagus and make this into a full meal. These Thai chili chicken lettuce wraps are so great for summer because you serve these on lettuce with some crunchy steam fried noodles. So you get that awesome crunch. They're like the lettuce wraps that you get in a restaurant as an appetizer. You can have them as an appetizer or as a main. We have seriously brought these to people's houses when they've asked us to bring something along and it's a pretty impressive one, I have to say. So in your large freezer bag, you're gonna add some ground chicken that is cooked already and then some minced garlic, 
onion, cashews that are roasted, uh, some more matchstick carrots, red pepper that's diced, fish sauce, soy sauce, and that's it. Then in a medium size or quart size bag, you're gonna add some Thai sweet chili sauce, lime juice, and sesame seeds. You're gonna get the air out of both bags, staple them together above the seal, and this is such a nice, fresh tasting one, and no one will ever believe it's a freezer meal. This is the salmon with brown sugar glaze. It couldn't be more simple. We're starting out with our salmon in the bag, in the large bag, we're gonna close that up, and in a small bowl, we're going to stir together a quarter cup brown sugar and a couple of tablespoons of Dijon mustard and add a little salt and pepper. We're gonna mix that up, put it in the medium bag and staple the bags together before freezing. On the day of cooking, we're going to take that Dijon brown sugar spread and literally spread it on top of the salmon and bake it like that. This is gonna be delicious. This is chicken and spinach penne alfredo. Although this time we are only making the sauce, we are not gonna cook up the pasta, but you totally can. And just if you do that, you're gonna to wanna to undercook your pasta a little bit before you add it in, because on the day of cooking, it'll cook a little more and you don't want mushy noodles. So into our large freezer bags, we're going to put three cooked and cubed chicken breasts, which is the equivalent of three cups. We're gonna put a jar of alfredo, some pesto, minced garlic, olive oil and fresh spinach because of course this is one of the recipes we're using up that spinach in. Now I do have pesto in the house but in my fridge I had a jar of truffle pesto and I thought hmm I'm curious what that would taste like. So we're gonna add truffle pesto instead of regular pesto. I think it's gonna be pretty darn good but we'll have to wait and see. So that's about it. Uh, and then we'll do the next recipe for the spinach as well. So with the rest of the Italian sausage, I'm gonna make the spinach sausage pasta bake, and hopefully that'll use up a chunk of the extra spinach as well. I do have a bit more sausage, so I've put it in a quart size freezer bag and I'm just gonna throw this in one of our freezers. I'm actually gonna be nice and give it to Christy. That way, it can be used in eggs or hash browns or in pasta or on nachos. It's just great to have. So in our sausage spinach pasta sauce, we're going to use the rest of our ground Italian sausage. Again, Christy's family's got the mild and we've got the spicy. We're gonna use some diced onion, some minced garlic, some Italian style plum tomatoes. And these ones have some basil in them already, which is gonna be a nice addition some heavy cream, so we're using whipped cream, and lots and lots of fresh spinach. Now again, normally we would cook the pasta up and put it in here, but this time we're just gonna do the sauce, and then on the day that we go to make it, we will add the pasta in here. This is a really nice one. These beef fajitas freezer meals have been in our club for quite a while, and you can find the link below we start out with our beef strips in the bag. We're going to add sliced onion, red and yellow peppers, some salsa, lime juice, and Worcestershire sauce. Super easy to get it started. It's gonna freeze nicely. So, we are nearing the end, and oh my goodness, my whole body is feeling it. Uh, I think we're both pretty exhausted and ready to be done, but we're gonna push through and we accidentally may have made more meals than we were intending, which always happens, but this time a little more than usual. We're gonna get to that at the end, but I did have some ground chicken left over. I knew that I bought too much. The reason that I did that is because once in a while, our local grocery store will have something that they call plenty for 20. And that is where you can pick four packs of meat. They're you know, specific types of meat or whatever. And you don't know until you get there what it's gonna be. And you pay $20 for all four packs. So this time our steak for that sesame steak came in the plenty for 20 and the ground chicken came in the plenty for 20. So I didn't know until I got to the store what it was gonna be. I made a rash decision to load a bit of extra ground chicken into my cart because sometimes we use it for ground chicken taco meat, which is so good on nachos. 
Um, or we've got quite a few other recipes with ground chicken because it's a pretty economical meat uh, where we live. And not only did I get this in the Plenty for 20 sale, it was also on 15% off day. So I actually got it for less than the $20, which was pretty awesome. So, so we've got this extra ground chicken. It's already cooked up and I've got enough to make three meals with it. And I'm going to make our barbecue chicken sloppy joes. I'll put the recipe link in the description. These are really good. Christy says they're not as good as original Sloppy Joes, but some of my kids beg to disagree. In our bag, we've got our cooked ground chicken, some diced onion, green pepper. We have just a little bit of green pepper left. So I'm just gonna make do and portion it out between the three bags. It won't be as exactly as much as the original recipe calls for, but you know, done is better than perfect and we're just making do. Then we're gonna put in some barbecue sauce and tomato sauce. That's it, we're gonna seal up that bag. This bag will be a nice thin one, which at this point in the day is also a bonus and may have played into my decision when I decided what to make with this extra meat because our freezers are getting pretty darn full. Our last recipe, and the crowd roared, yay. <laughs> is ham and cheese sliders. We saved the best for last because this one is delicious. My favorite way to make these is, not to make these, but to eat these is when we're camping. And I'll tell you one time, like I camp in a trailer, I'm pretty fancy schmancy, but one time I made these in the trailer and then we went for a hike with a bunch of friends and it started to drizzle and it was rainy and we got back and I had these hot buns sitting there with ham and the ooey goodness of the, there's a drizzle on it. My goodness, these were the best. And um, I will always think of that when I make these because they are really good. So we're going to take, you know how you can buy a 12 pack of dinner buns? We're going to buy them like that. We're going to slice them. You're gonna watch my magical knife skills as I slice this entire pack and you can do it however you want. We're gonna open it all up as if it's like one big giant bun. And on the bottom part, we're gonna put that into a baking tray. And then we're going to put our ham and cheese on top of the buns. And then we're just gonna put the top of the buns back on. In a little bowl, we're going to mix the dressing. It's going to be melted butter, some mayo, some Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, some poppy seeds, some honey, and a little bit of dried onion. And we're gonna mix that together and then drizzle that down over the buns. Then we are going to double wrap this with some aluminum foil and pop it in our freezer. Now we were debating whether we were smart doing this last or not. We think we're smart doing it last because then it'll go up the very top of our stack in our freezer and nothing will have to sit on top of it, um, meaning it might get crushed by the meals on top of it on that aluminum foil. I think this is perfect and it's a good bookend to our big day. Hi, hi, we are at the end of day two. <laughs> We're laughing so hard, we're crying. I made her, I made her laugh so hard she cried. Hey, at least I didn't laugh so hard I peed. Oh, so, true story. Yay. Um, we're done day two and can we have a drum roll please for our grand total? It is... Da, 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 da. We have accidentally, not on purpose, beat our record. I think you were secretly hoping for that. I think no. deep in your heart, you're like, I could do better. No, I... <laughs> I was like, we told you at the beginning that we pared down the list mm -hmm. and we knocked like <laughs> knocked six like recipes, which is many? Like 24 I don't even. meals off. Right. I mean the original list because we were like, we were going to do seafood shells. We were going to do this mm -hmm. lemon fish one oh, that I'm sounded so, glad so good. I'm so glad the seafood shells. I would have died. <laughs> Oh, our feet, okay. our feet, our hips, Charlotte's poor shoulder. Oh, it's bad, but it's good because we're gonna show you why. Mm -hmm. And our record was 150 freezer meals before today, and the new record is 153. <laughs> so we might need an intervention. <laughs> we might need an intervention. Okay, um, uh, this is this, this is, is freezer, freezer number one. Dun, 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 dun. Insert romantic music. Okay, is that not 
like one of the most beautiful things you have ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> like it kind of makes you want to sob. <laughs> it just makes me want to cry because my arm hurts so much. But Because <laughs> laughing is very close to crying sometimes. <laughs> yes. But let's go look at the other freezer because okay. it's pretty impressive too. Take you on a walk. We have, we have, funny, we have, um, see those water bottles? We put three across this doorway to make an, in, like, a baby gate <laughs> to block this room off normally. But, okay, freezer number, freezer number two. Ooh. Now, it's yeah. not as full. It has a few freezer meals for one on top for, like, lunches and stuff, because those a, were there before. It's got a few hockey pucks in there. You probably can't. Oh, can <laughs> you see the hockey pucks? <gasps> Because what, what good Canadian freezer doesn't have hockey pucks in it? <laughs> Did we mention we're in Canada? <laughs> there are always three or four hockey pucks in my freezer. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we've okay. reached the giddy point of we today. We have reached the funny. Um, we're going to go back in the other room and we'll... <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I eventually just had to like get rid of my shoes altogether because my feet were just complaining so much. So tips, tip number 7,000, <laughs> it's okay to get rid of your shoes at the end of day two when your feet have complained. And I took, you know, you know when you take skates or ski boots or some kind of heavy duty something on your feet and it just feels so good. That's what it feels like right now. I'm about to take my shoes off and I'm gonna sit down. We're gonna show you how bad the kitchen looks because a bit of I did a bit of filming when Christy was putting together that last recipe because we're real and we want to show you that this is actually and like- And your mom went home with it it didn't look like that. <laughs> yes, we went home hours ago, which good. She, um, she do that. But- uh, It's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's and a disaster. so just being real that, that this is not like magic. Woof, poof, freezer meals. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's a mess and your house will be too if you do it, but oh my goodness tonight We're gonna be sore tomorrow. We might be a little sore, but every single time we open that freezer and see oh, no. I just feel so good and feel so accomplished and just oh. feel so lucky like I feel so, so lucky. lucky so lucky um, but it's not all luck It's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of planning and uh, we're glad you could come along with us on our little journey here Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate having had you on this journey It's so much more fun Knowing that we are hopefully helping you guys and if you are still here at the end of this saga <laughs> Thank you. We know that you're diehards and we love you. We really, really do. <laughs> um, check out all the links below. Come join us in the Facebook group, the club, all the things. Ask all the questions you want and tell all your friends about us. Because freezer meals can change your life. It certainly changed ours. It's true.